Hello, Upper East Siders. It's me. No, not her. Gossip Girl got canceled. It's me, Taylor Thomas, Manhattan's sweetest heiress. Surely you've heard of me. Whatever. This story isn't about me anyway. This one is all about my BFF Al, Sloan St. James. Mom? Celeste? Anyone home? I'm going to eat carbs. Ugh, thank God. Yes, girl. You eat that mm. grilled cheese. Where was I? Hmm. This is Sloane, daughter of Joseph St. James of the Hudson Valley and heiress turned artist Vivian Bryant. As you probably know, Sloane's uber famous mom has been painting Sloane since she was like six to major critical acclaim. In 2003, after Vivian's Gagosian show titled Baby Girl, New York Magazine even called Sloan the mini Mona Lisa of our time. It was huge. The point is, everyone in all five boroughs is still obsessed with Sloan, like 20 years later. When we go out, guys still call Sloan baby girl. It really pisses Sloan off. Sloane and I have been best friends since middle school when Sarah Wolf stole my baby Chanel bag and Sloan stole it back from me. Oh crap, here comes mommy dearest. Sloan, don't eat standing up. It's harmful to digestion and leads to overeating. Hello, mother. <gasps> Is that cheese? Not this again. How shall I explain the artiste Vivian Bryant? What's a nice way to say, mm, a fussy bitch? Vivian doesn't like it when anyone interferes with her baby girl image, including Sloan. It's been the Sloan and Vivian show for years. In the divorce, Vivian kept the Upper East Side and her muse. Sloan's daddy got his farm and freedom, but lost his daughter. Sloan doesn't talk about him much. It's like every time Vivian's wanted to reinvent herself as an artist over the last 20 years, she's reinvented Sloan. Oh, here comes Celeste, Vivian's manager. Let's get this champagne open. Mm-mm, I'm on a cleanse. You got a retrospective at MoMA. Screw the cleanse. Wait, what? Can you believe it, Sloan? You should be very proud. This exhibit is Sloan's literal worst nightmare. And unfortunately, even though Sloan is great at standing up for stolen Chanel, when it comes to her own life, she's, you know. I, wow, um, that's really great. Thank you, darling. To the artist and her little muse. Hmm. Puke. As if Sloan ever got a choice. I mean, she was six when all of this started. What was she supposed to say? Mm, darling, we're going to need your schedule for the next couple of weeks. My schedule? They want to unveil a new portrait at the retrospective. <laughs> it's a huge honor. But what does that have to do with me? Your mother sold it as the mini Mona Lisa all grown up. It's going to be groundbreaking. Another portrait of me? But mom, I just sat for one last... Celeste will schedule you for the sittings. We won't start work until next week to give you time to prep. Next week? I've booked you for a lymphatic drainage massage. Uh, all the girls are getting it now. It does wonders for bloating. I can't have you puffy in the portrait. Ugh. Is something wrong, Sloane? Not at all. Let me uh, go grab my... Uh, you know what? I'll be right back. <laughs> Uh oh. Five. First comes the breathing four, exercises, then three, comes the tearing off of her jaw nails. Two, she just got those one. done. Uh, Sloan! Her manicure uh, is ruined. Damn it, Vivian. Okay, um, Taylor to the rescue. Hey, babe. Hey, you gotta help me. I'm drowning. Oh, God. What did she do? She wants another portrait. No. Yes. Damn. What number is this? I don't know, portrait number 125? It's for MoMA. What are you going to do? I'm freaking out. I don't want to be the new and improved baby girl again. Taylor, this has been my entire life. You know, I want to decide who I am and what I do for once. Everyone has all these ideas about me and what I'm going to do, and it's just... <laughs> but you do know who you are, and so do I. You are the hottest girl in Manhattan, which means 
you have options. Like what? Marrying a prince and moving to his kingdom? Uh, wasn't there a diplomat son who asked you to move to France? He was on coke. You could go to Brooklyn. Your mom would never. For MoMA, I think she might cross the bridge. You could always just say no. How do I say no to her? Like, sure, she's my mom, but she also happens to be the Vivian Bryant. Then you just need to go somewhere where the Vivian Bryant won't follow. Oh my god. Your dad. My dad's? I screen his calls. Everyone screens their dad's calls. You told me Vivian hasn't set foot in the Hudson Valley since they broke up. It's perfect. You can take my car. I live in the city. My license is expired. Me too, duh. I mean, take my driver. Won't your family miss him? Doubtful. I'll just say I forgot him again in Montauk. (laughs) I don't know, Taylor. I love Sloan, but I'll spare you the back and forth it took to get that girl to do something for herself for once. The point is, Sloan and I planned her escape to her dad's house for the following morning. All those years of sneaking out really paid off. Now Sloan's en route. She definitely packed the wrong things, and Vivian's definitely gonna freak. But Sloan is on her way, thanks to me and my driver. We forgot to call Sloan's dad. Yes, which is insane. It's been like 15 years. We're about 10 minutes from your father's ranch, Miss St. James. Hey, you're welcome to take a call, Miss St. James. I don't mind. Oh, no, it's... It's just my mother. Oh, no. I know that look. Our little Sloane is getting nervous. Time to call your dad, Sloan. Let's go. Um, uh, Taylor's driver? Uh, David? Dial that number, babe. Do you think you could, like, pull over or something? Of course, Miss St. James. Uh, up here? Maybe by that bar? <sighs> She's not going to call her dad, is she? This girl's about to drink. I'm just going to run in and have a drink. Do you want one? Did she just ask to buy my driver a drink? I'm all right, Miss St. James. Uh, You can call me Sloan. Enjoy your drink, Miss Sloan. I have to say, the runway look is incredible on Sloan. She's showing way too much skin for this geographical location, but that boosty top is killing it. Looking good, honey. I don't know. Ew. Mm. Okay, so this bar is cute. It's like the Cheesecake Factory tried to dress up as Fred's. It's giving rustic. What can I get you, ma'am? Can I get a vodka soda, please? Extra lime? Don't those shoes hurt your feet? They're platforms. And looks like they hurt like hell. I'll alert Donatella. You got ID? I'm 25. It's the law. My license is expired. Then you can have a soda. Extra lot. Ugh, take the soda, Sloan. That guy is hot. How is she not noticed? Great hair. Ugh, I would eat him alive. Listen, bartender, my name is Sloan. Riley. Well, Riley, it's actually your lucky day today. Is it? Why is that? Because today is the day you get to buy me a drink. I'll sit here at the bar with my vodka soda and we can get to know each other. Ooh, wow. I know. I feel lucky. Uh, You are. There's just one thing, though. Yeah? I don't serve drinks to minors. I'm not a minor. You don't have ID. But... And you look about 18, max. Okay, it's not my fault. I have good genes. Am I being punished for aging gracefully? That's discrimination. (laughs) I'd like to talk to your manager, please. That'd be me. What are you doing so far from New York City? How did you... Lucky guess. Sure. I recognize you. From what? Your dreams? Aren't you the little girl whose mom paints her? Oh, um, good one. I'm here visiting my father. Oh, yeah? Maybe I know him. I doubt it. Try me. Joseph St. James. Really? I didn't know Joey had a kid with Vivian Bryan. We're estranged, and I'm not a kid. Whatever. I guess I'll go. Wait, baby girl. What? (laughs) You forgot your soda. Keep it. You seem thirsty. Sloan, wait. Will you tell your dad I've been trying to reach him? I'm not his secretary. Just tell him that. I'm still waiting on my order. I don't want to pressure him, but I know he needs the cash for the restaurant. Restaurant? My dad runs a dairy farm. You guys really are estranged. I'll tell him. All right, see you around. I hope not. Okay, so obviously, that Riley guy totally wants Sloan. 
the way he was talking to her and she was like a silly little yes yeah uh, patriarchy but also like yums this is like kind of epic Sloane's about to see her dad for the first time in wait Sloane's dad's ranch is gorgeous this house looks like it was designed by Nicholas Sparks. A porch swing? I can't believe Vivian didn't try to take this in the divorce. Sure, it could use a little TLC, but Sloane's totally been holding out on me. We could have been taking girls trips here for years. Why did she insist we rent that place in the Catskills to do shrooms? We could have done them here. Will you be requiring my services further, Miss Sloane? No, thank you, I'll be fine. Uh, you should get back. As you wish. Good luck, Miss Sloan. What happened to this place? Hello? Dad? Hello? Come on, girl. Give us the tour. What are you doing? How many Architectural Digest videos have we watched? Are those bay windows? Whoa. Oh. My. God. Her childhood bedroom. Is it exactly the same as the day she left? Is Sloane's dad about to go all Miss Havisham on us? Yes, I've read the book. Noni, is that you? <gasps> Louie, what are you doing here? I didn't know you still worked here. Me? What are you doing here? Oh, I needed to get away. You're still running this place? Someone has to, especially with your dad. My dad what? Oh, come here. It's been so long, I almost don't believe it. Where's my dad? Oh, uh, he, uh, he had some business in town. Oh. He should be back soon. Okay. Are you staying? I, I'm, I'm not sure yet. Um, do you think that'll be all right? Your dad will be thrilled. I know what we're all thinking. Sloan St. James, what the hell are you wearing? She's lucky it's almost sundown. An all saints leather jacket with borrowed wellies. I guess this road is incredibly muddy. Ugh, ugh. Ugh. How big is this place? There are freaking stables here. I wonder if Sloan is about to go full cottage core. <gasps> Horses! Oh my god! When did he. A while back. Said he always wanted horses. So did I. <laughs> what are their names? Uh, that one over there, Star, and this is Maple. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you the barn. Bye, ladies. You know, your dad is. Yeah? Nothing. He'll be happy you came. He tries calling, you know. <clears throat> uh, here, uh, let me get the door. What is this place? It was going to be a restaurant, but now we're not sure what to do with it. The light in here is incredible. Wait, a restaurant? You really are all grown up. Yeah, tell that to the bartender in town. What? He carded me. <laughs> Louie, that you? We're in here, Joey. No need. I forgot Sloane's dad is a zaddy. Hey, Dad. Does your mom know you're here? If I say no, will you rat me out? No. Okay. I'm sorry I haven't made it to any of her shows. That's probably for the best. I'm sure you look beautiful. I just came here for a place to... So, what? You wear expensive clothes now. Obviously. What else do you do? Huh? When you go to those charity events with your mother and the exclusive guest lists and open bars, the ones where you have no idea where any of the money is actually going, I see the papers. Huh? Why are you being so rude? It's where I used to go with your mother. So what do you do? What are you talking about? What do you do to make all that bearable? What makes you think it's unbearable? You're here, aren't you? How on earth did he just read her like that? It's design, by the way. The thing that Sloane does to make it all bearable? Design. Vivian might have control over how her baby girl looks, but Sloane has control over how everything else looks. Her mom requests a blunt bob. Sloane gives in. Then Vivian comes home and Sloane's totally redecorated their guest bath. Vivian lets her get away with it, so long as Sloane sits for the next portrait. What should I say when she calls? Right. <sighs> well, how long should I tell her you're here for, if she asks? Maybe tell her I don't know yet. All right. It's good to see you, Noni. Oh. <sighs> Welcome home. Now, who's hungry? I'm starving. Me too, actually. Let's make grilled cheese. Unless you don't eat that anymore, Noni. No, grilled cheese sounds great. What? 
Morning. It's the middle of the night. I was dreaming. Definitely a Timothy Chalamet dream. She's always pissy when you wake her up from one of those. It's 5.30. Exactly. Mm, Joseph, (laughs) please tell me you're joking. I get it. You're a country zaddy and all, but this is the hour Sloan and I go to bed after we get too drunk beneath the four horsemen. Thought you might like to come help me with the milking. You thought I might like to wake up at 5.30 in the morning to tug on a teat? You used to love milking the cows with me. When she told me that she grew up on a farm, I thought she was just being polite about owning 60 acres. She never mentioned milking a cow. I was 10. I guess I can manage. Wonderful. See you in five hours. So... Joseph St. James left his daughter to sleep after a long night of grilled cheese and awkward pauses. Now he and Louie have returned from the morning chores for breakfast. These men are clearly not used to having a woman in the house. Why are they yelling? Morning, Noni! (sighs) Stop yelling! (laughs) You tell them, babe. You want breakfast? I'm not allowed to eat before noon. You got a condition? I'm intermittent fasting. What the hell is that? I only consume food in a narrow window. What about coffee? Noni, what are you doing? Sloane's setting the scene for her coffee. She must be stressed. Like I told you, Sloane's all about design. The more out of control her life feels, the more Sloane requires the perfect table setting and seating arrangement. Maybe everything I just said makes her sound like a nutcase. What it really means is that everything Sloane touches becomes Beautiful. Do we have any fresh cut flowers? Tony, what are you doing? What? Here. Hey, I was drinking that. Out of a chipped mug. Where are your saucers? We don't have saucers. I didn't know that things had gotten so rustic up here. It wasn't like this when I was a kid. You weren't like this when you were a kid. We need to get to stacking. What? Stacking? Hey, for the animals. We haven't stacked it properly. We were waiting on... Help. And you've got help? Yep. What? Why are you guys staring at me like that? No. No, 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 no. Don't tell us you're afraid of some hay bales. I'm not afraid. I simply have no interest in hauling an allergen. You know, your mom hasn't called yet. She probably thinks I'm at Taylor's. Vivian would sooner guess that Sloane is on a boat in the Maldives than at her father's scruffy estate. Vivian called me, and I told her Sloane and I were going on a little bender, but we'd be home in time for the lymphatic massage. If I can keep this up, maybe I can take Sloane's massage? There's a freaking wait list for those. And frankly, she owes me. I'm just saying, Noni, if you don't want to live with your mother and you want to try living here... Are you blackmailing me into farming? I just got here. I'm not blackmailing you. I just think it'd be good for you to work. Hmm. You mean good for you? It seems like you lack structure. What? Because I don't wake up before sunrise? When was the last time you worked? And don't say I made an appearance. Attending a party doesn't count. What is this? When you were younger, you loved working with the animals. You were so proud when you could finally push the wheelbarrow. When are you going to get it? Sloane? No. Clearly, he wants me to be an amenable child who goes wild for shoveling shit. Guess what? I'm not her anymore. And if he hadn't left us, he would know that. Come on, Noni. I'm not ordering you to do anything. I'm saying it might feel good to work with your hands. You don't have to. So you're giving me a choice? Of course. Well, that's something. Girl, I can hear your therapist talking. Has Vivian ever given Sloane a choice? Maybe between which press juice cleanse she wanted to go on. But Vivian didn't even ask Sloane what she wanted in the divorce. She said, your father is leaving me, so we're leaving him. And that was it. All right, Lou, let's go. A hug. Oh my god. How is the trip upstate? Your mom will not stop calling me. She's persistent. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I cannot sit there with her staring at me for hours and then hear her ask about my pores. I beg of you, what art movement is this concerned with microfoliants? Well, how's it going with dear old daddy? He wants me to stack hay. He's punishing you? It's like he can't handle how much he doesn't know me anymore, so he's treating me like I'm 10. I honestly don't know if I can stay here. Well, maybe, and don't be mad. I won't be mad. Maybe you should let him get to know you. By stacking hay? No. Well, I don't know. Who's worse, him or mommy dearest? Hmm. 
people. What we are witnessing now is the makeover montage in reverse. Sloane is going to bail hay. Ew. Sloane's hair is going to be in a bun. Are those sweats? She's putting on sweats that do not match her top. She's going full country. Oh my God. Would you look at that? Looks like we got ourselves a helper, Joseph. So what do I do? Do you want to throw or stack? Both sound equally bad. Why don't you stack? Louie will throw them up to me. I'll hand them to you. You pile them up. Ready? Ugh. Okay, Lou. Let's go. Ugh. Here. Yeah. Here you go. Got it? I got it. Ugh. Sloan, watch out. Ugh. 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 Damn it. After three hours and a couple of close calls involving a hay bale and his head, Joseph decided it was time for a break. Is Sloan laying on the ground? The bare-ass ground? Is that hay in her hair? Here, eat this. What is this? Jerky? Mmm, it's good for you. There is no possible way this dry little meat strip could be good for me. It's just protein. Protein and enough sodium to kill a horse. You're being a princess, Sloan. Fine. Stack your own hay, then. Sloan, come on. Bite me, Louie. Ugh! Sloan, where are you going? I don't know where this girl thinks she's going. Sloan, do not walk through that field. There could be snakes in there. Definitely ticks. You gonna go after her? She needs to cool off. She's headed toward the property line. Ah. Uh, Sloan, wait! You're headed the wrong way! Why are you huffing and puffing? You didn't run that far. Give me a break. He needs a break? What about me? I'm narrating my butt off. I didn't ask you to come after me. This place used to be so beautiful. What is all this crap you've left behind the barn? Maybe I'm being judgmental, but it does look like a junkyard back here. It was supposed to be for the restaurant. I found or salvaged most of it. I thought I'd give the place a vintage look, but then there were some complications. What complications? Uh, Some health stuff came up. I didn't get around to finishing it. By the time I was feeling well enough, Whole Foods had opened up and things started getting bleak at the farm. Riley only buys for me to be kind. Wait, what health stuff? Is Sloan Zaddy sick? Nothing important. I kept people on for as long as I could. I was paying them out of my savings. I couldn't justify laying them off. When I finally had to let them go, I let the restaurant idea go with them. What is the hot bar guy doing here? He's even hotter in the daytime. Are those Wranglers? I wish she'd wrangle me. What's his name again? Riley? You two know each other. No. Yes. Riley was the one who recently refused me service at his establishment. Oh, you've been talking about me, huh? Oh, please. You're here for your order? What are you selling? What what do we have? Herbs, cheese, raw milk. Your dad helped me create the hottest charcuterie board in town. It's all ready for you in the cooler. Uh, Sorry about the delay. Oh, no worries. Um, I know you've been going through it. Right. Thanks. (coughs) (coughs) I was just teaching Sloan to bail hay. Uh, You guys need me some help? Uh, I've got a while before I need to get back to the bar. We're fine. We'd love some help. If you're offering. What? (laughs) I got some gloves in the car. I'll go grab them and I'll be right back. Of course he has gloves in his car. Probably a couple of bras, too. We do not need his help. What's the matter with you? Nothing! Riley, how about you and I throw? Cool. Ready, Noni? One sec. Thank God. Sloan's about to do the shake and stare. Everybody and their mother knows about the bend and snap, but the shake and stare? That's a Sloan St. James original. First, she takes the hair tie out, shakes her hair gently, then fluffs a little and closes her eyes like she just can't believe how soft her hair is. And now she's staring at Riley while tying her hair back into that tightest ponytail she can handle. (coughs) It works every time. Take a picture. I'd rather paint a portrait. Oh, he can get it. Sloan, you coming up? Coming. Okay, so I definitely wish I could tell you Sloan and Riley took a roll in the hay all afternoon, but nope, it was all very G-rated. Still, something is definitely going on with those two. Anyway, it's late, and I need to hit the hay. But let's check in on Sloan. She's like weirdly obsessed with this barn. What are you doing up there? Ah, Dad, you scared me. Need help? Hold the ladder and keep me from breaking my neck. 
What are the string lights for? I found them in the shed. Making something look pretty clears my head, and that might sound silly to you, but after today, I need it. Doesn't sound silly. That <laughs> sounds like your mom. Oh, goody. I just mean that you both always have a vision for beauty. I've never had that. The farm doesn't look that bad. It just needs finesse. I think you're right about that. Do these big lights turn off? I want to see something. Here. See, I think if you covered the ceiling in lights draped like this, it looks sort of starry. It'd be like a continuation of the night sky. Is that stupid? No, it's a great idea. Oh, thanks. What? I'm just not used to people liking my ideas. You're not used to being allowed to have ideas. Well, I'm sorry. I shouldn't criticize your mother. It's kind of nice to hear anyone criticize her. Actually, no one will do it. Everyone's always too busy trying to impress her. Excusez-moi. Except my friend Taylor. She has a lot to say. I'm glad you have someone you can talk to. Do you have someone that you could talk to? <sighs> Star, Maple. Those are horses. Why did Riley say you've been going through it? Louis, I talked to Louis. He's been a good friend to me. Stuck by me, helped with the milking and feeding, made sure we still had something to sell. I didn't know things had gotten that bad. The restaurant was supposed to save us. I think it'll sink us. Is he admitting he's broke? But you own this place. It's not like it's going to get taken away, right? If I can get this place back into shape, hire back some staff. And I might have to sell. You can't. I don't want to. Then don't. <laughs> All right then. Ah, <sighs> what? Sloan? Mother. Darling, I've been trying to reach you. Celeste is having a conniption. She cannot sink you to her eye, Cal. Where are you? I'm um at a friend's house. What friend? A, a guy friend. You've disappeared for a man again. Oh, Sloan. How can she make Sloan's name sound so insulting? I need to get to work on this painting. Where does he live? I'll send the car. I'm not in the city. Sloan, you are in the city. You were at your massage appointment yesterday. I called the spa. Thanks, mommy dearest. What? Mom, I, I can't do this. Do what? I don't. Come on, Sloney. I'm actually, I'm doing something. Sweetheart, you're not doing anything. You're just gallivanting around with some European drug lords again. Mom, I don't. Enough. I have picked up enough of your tabs, sent money to God knows where and to God knows whom, and all I ask is that you sit for my portraits. Mom. Home now. <gasps> It's another beautiful morning on the farm. I mean, this country mist yesterday was like huge. Sloane told her mother no. Well, she almost did. I don't know what Sloane's planning this morning, but she's got a slick middle part and is headed downstairs. Our girl is up to something. What are you doing up? Where's Louis? I gave him the day off. Why? We are going to fix this restaurant. For the grand reopening, we're going to host the biggest dinner party the Hudson Valley has ever seen, and we're going to overcharge rich people for it. Babe, you are rich people. Noni, calm down. Take a breather. Yesterday you were bugging me to work. Now I'm trying, and you're telling me to stop. I am capable of doing some things. Something, you know. I know you are. Whoever said. Then why won't you let me help? You don't think I can help? I'm sure you can. You don't sound sure. It's not that. What? I appreciate how much you're trying to help. But I don't feel. What? Why can't I help? You're helping me right now by letting me be here. This is your home. You know what I mean. It just feels wrong for you to help me clean up my mess when I wasn't around to help you clean up any of yours. I'm your dad. I'm supposed to help you, not the other way around. But Noni, if I let you do this, how is that any different than what you ran away from? It is different. I can't let you do this. But it's my choice. It's not a choice if you believe there's no other option, Sloane. Damn, he's got a point. Think about it. Really think about if this is what you want to do. Ugh. What? Come on. What? You're driving me to the DMV. I hate the DMV. Everyone does. I need to get my effing license renewed. What's the rush? The rush is I will not be getting carded by Riley ever again. Noni. Time to wake up. Not this again, please. Uh huh. 
You said you wanted to help with the restaurant. Outside in ten minutes. <sighs> Last night, Sloan suggested in some sort of carbon-induced fugue state to save the restaurant. Vivian has been leaving Sloan increasingly desperate voicemails as her MoMA retrospective approaches. She even sent Celeste to Staten Island last night after receiving an anonymous tip that Sloan's new beau lives there. That anonymous tip was sent by me. The barn is a wreck, but Sloan has a plan that's going to work. I hope. The ugly boots are on. Let the morning chores commence. <sighs> morning, sunshine. Ugh. You want a milk or well, muck first? What the hell is muck? Whatever it is, I'll pass. Fine by me. Morning, ladies. Ugh. I'll take these back up to the house if you want to start mucking out the horse stalls. Uh-uh. No, you don't. I'm not doing that. I don't even know what that means. It means you grab that shovel, go in there, and pick up anything you wouldn't want to step in. And how is uh, this going to help the restaurant? Hey, farm's got to make cash. Speaking of, I got to get this milk in the fridge. Louie, get back here. I'll be right back. I will not <laughs> muck by myself. Oh, God. So I just Ugh. picked up a shovel. Ugh. Ugh. Hello, my gorgeous, gorgeous girls. How are we doing today? <laughs> what? I've never heard Sloan talk like that in my entire life. Oh, ugh. I am going to kill my dad. Maple, why are you stomping? Is, is that what I was about to... Don't you dare do that so close to me. Maple! No, absolutely not. I did not sign up for ew. this. Ew, 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 ew. Sloan, we'll meet you back at the house for breakfast. Louie? Father? Ooh, somebody's hangry. I was just on my way back to you. Oh, really? Is that why you're holding a cup of coffee? How are the horses? Did they give you any trouble? If by trouble you mean inducing dry heaving, <laughs> then yes. Oh, boy. What's for breakfast? I'm starving. No more intermittent fasting. Fasting is not for those of us forced to wheelbarrows full of shit. How about some bacon? I'm vegan. There's coffee in the pot. What is this? A mug. These mugs don't have chips in them. Where do they come from? I bought them yesterday. Kiss ass. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Sloan St. James is doing chores, and Joseph is buying dishware. Is she complaining? Yes. Did he buy those mugs from Target? Also, yes, 100%. But baby steps, people. <gasps> Whoa, where's the fire? What? I finished my chores. You're not in trouble. I was just curious. The barn isn't going to fix itself. It's time for the fun part. Sloane is wearing a baby t-shirt and low-rise jeans. That's not a barn-fixing outfit, babe. Is she holding a hammer? Wait, are those my low-rise jeans? Noni, we talked about this. You're not even going to let me try? I know you're excited about fixing up the restaurant, but running this place is a lot of work. It's making sure that the animals are fed, watered, cleaned, that our cheeses are aged correctly, stored. I'm doing all of that. You did it for one morning, and you almost puked. What that horse did to me was disgusting. And it's going to happen many more times. It's not going to be pretty or fun. I get it. Can I go now? All right. I don't want to lose this place. No need. I'll be in the barn. Sloan is in project mode. Step one is clear the space. Step two, clean and prep the space for redecoration. Step three, shopping. I'm going to need a dumpster. She's going to need a dumpster and a miracle. And if she ruins my jeans, she's going to need a lawyer. Oh, tell me she's not trying to move that wood slab table by herself. It's full of splinters. Ugh. 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 Is she about to take it apart? Where'd she learn to use a drill? Oh, Lee, who installed her mom's last exhibition. She told him if he taught her how to use a drill that she would let him just... You know what? You, you get it. Ugh. Ow! Shit! I see she's still learning. You need some help? Ah! Ah! God! Louie, how long have you been standing there? Long enough to know you need help moving that table. I'm fine. Damn, Noni, it's looking good in here. I need your truck. My truck? I need to get all this crap to a dumpster. You need my truck to voluntarily move garbage? That's what I said. You can borrow my truck. Now? I've got stuff to do here anyways. Wait, 
do you know how to drive stick? A boy taught me last summer in the Hamptons. Oh, that's right. His name was Hale. I don't think he wore a shirt that whole summer. <laughs> You're too young for boys. Goodbye, Louis. All right, all right. Remember, don't ride. Don't ride the clutch. I know. So, after a long afternoon of moving garbage, sweeping, and deciding which salvage furniture to keep, Sloane just left a construction site. Because she was throwing away all her garbage, now she's got the windows down and the wind blowing through her aggressively shiny hair. Sloane is on her way into town to scope out a kitchen supply store for restaurant goodies and appliances. I haven't seen her look this unpolished since maybe ever, or dare I say happy. Ugh. What? Sloane St. James, I'm done with whatever game it is you're playing. I'm not playing a game, Mother. What is this? Are you trying to teach me some sort of lesson? Mom, I'm driving. Can I call you back? Driving? Where are you? Uh, oh, crap. Oh, he's going to kill me. Uh, Sloan? Mom, I got to go. Oh, my God. Time to call AAA, babe. No, 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 no. <sighs> what did I do? Crap, 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 crap. Ow! Kicking that car is not going to make it cool down. Sloane has ground the clutch to shreds. Now she's on the side of the road looking like, well, a rich girl who broke a car. Mm, but someone's pulling up. Wait, I recognize that truck. <laughs> Damn, what'd this truck do to you? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Don't you ever have somewhere to be? I thought damsels in distress were supposed to be sweeter. I'm not in distress. I saw you kick this car. Keep looking at me like that and you're next. Hey, Noni, what? I messed up Louis' truck. Why are you driving Louis' truck? Isn't it a stick? Yes. Are you riding the clutch? No, I was not riding the clutch. I can drive stick. <laughs> Shut up. What did I do? No, not you. <laughs> Riley. He saw me and pulled over. Oh, good. Have him give you a ride home. Send me your location. I'll have the truck picked up. I will not ask him for a ride. I'll bring her home, Joey. See you soon. Dad! Hop in, honey. <sighs> Let me grab my purse. Sloane's fluffing her hair. She's putting on lip gloss. Was that a mint? She's so into him. What are you staring at? Girl, you're wearing a baby tee with no bra. You know what he's staring at. Buckle up, baby girl. Do pet names normally work for you? <laughs> yes. My dad's house is that way. I have an errand to run first. Let me guess. Bootcut jeans convention? Nah. That was last week. Cowboy Boots Anonymous? Wednesdays at 6. The kitchen supply store? Oh, I was on my way here when I rescued you. Hey, Keith. Aren't you looking lovely today? You don't need to sweet talk me, Riley. Your piece came in. <laughs> oh, good. Is that a la conch? <gasps> What'd you call me? The oven. We just got that in. Gorgeous, isn't it? We don't normally keep them in stock. Keith, this is my friend Sloan. Wow. I've never seen one of this brass detail. Not in person, anyways. How do you know what a Laconche is? Riley here is quite the chef. He's hot and he can cook? How is this man single? I thought you were a manager. Oh, that's just my day job. I've got plenty of other skills. <laughs> he winks. He's single and horny. <laughs> What did you say your name was? Keith. I need this oven and a range hood and a sink that would look gorgeous in a barn. What's a girl like you need all that for? Oh, I'm rehabbing my dad's restaurant. We have gas and electric in there. I checked. I can get you what you need, but it's going to cost a pretty penny. Uh, Sloan, that oven is worth more than my car. My purse is worth more than your car. How are you going to pay for all this? I have a credit card. Credit cards have limits. Mine doesn't. I know what I'm doing. Look, Keith, I don't want to get ripped off just because I'm a girl holding a small purse. I wouldn't dream of ripping you off, Miss. St. James. You're Joey's girl. Real good to meet you. Now let's find you that sink. The two lovers have made it home. Keith gave Sloan a great deal and even included on-site white glove delivery, proving that anything can be done with a little bit of midriff showing. Riley has been sneaking glances at her the entire ride home. Here we are. Home, sweet home. Great. Don't you have something to say? Like what? 
like, thank you, Riley, for rescuing me from the side of the road. Thank you for being so buff and so strong. Thank you for... I got it! Thank you for driving me home. Yes, and? Rescuing me from the side of the road. Anything else? (laughs) You wish. Did you grow up here? What? Why? Just curious how someone grows up here and ends up like you. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Prissy? (laughs) Did you just call me a priss? Uh, Sorry, that didn't come out. No, you're right. I almost hurled doing farm chores today, but I wasn't always like this. I used to like dirt, I think. What happened? Oh, my parents split up. My mom and I moved. I avoided anything that reminded me of this place. So what? Are you actually a cowboy, or do you just like the little outfits? (laughs) I grew up on a ranch, but I was always more interested in cooking with my mom. Can I ask you something? He better be asking her out. Do you know what you're doing? Oh. What do you mean? Look, um, I'm just, I'm sure you have a plan and everything, but running a farm and restaurant is no joke. Thank you for stating the obvious. I mean, I'm pretty sure the floor in that barn is not even level. I know that. Do you even have a contractor or a chef? I will. Yikes, she does need a contractor and a chef. What do you think? I'm some sort of idiot? Nah, baby girl. (sighs) What? What else do you have to say? I'm spoiled and manicured and in over my head? Well, guess what? You're right. But if I don't figure this out, my dad is going to lose this place. He's not going to lose. Unless you have something helpful to say, leave me alone. Does this normally work for you? What? Pushing people away. Oh, save it. I don't need to be psychoanalyzed by a man with a Uh, hole in his shirt. Fine. I'm sorry about the farm. You stomped those porch steps, babe. You've had a long day. You broke a truck and then yelled at the hottest guy I've ever seen. Dad... Did you... Here are you two out, Riley. <laughs> yeah, I did. Mm, great. Come sit next to me. I think we need to talk. Finally! I've had it with these evasive girlies. Come on, Sloan. Ask the big questions. What? I'm sorry I ruined Louis's truck. Everything's gonna be all right. It seems like everything around here is falling apart. You included. I didn't want you to worry. Dad, what is actually going on around here? You're thinner than I've ever seen you. You keep disappearing into town, and I don't think it's for errands. About a year ago, I started feeling really exhausted. I thought I was just working too hard, but it didn't go away. So I finally went to the doctor. And? And they ran a bunch of tests, and it's an autoimmune disorder. Mostly I'm fighting fatigue, some dizziness, and a bit of nausea. Nothing too serious. That sounds serious. Why didn't you tell me? After I've been absent for 15 years. We're still family. I'm sorry. You gonna be okay? You work too much. You need to rest more. I'll do your morning chores. I can... No, Nene, come here. <laughs> I bought an oven. You did what? And a sink. And some other stuff. And we have to level out the floor. And I need a contractor. Does Louie actually know carpentry? Do we have any worker-type guys? I know a couple. <laughs> Wait, Sloan, who paid for all that stuff? I did. With what money? My Amex. You charged thousands of dollars worth of kitchen appliances to your mother's American Express account? Yes. <sighs> I'm going to have to call my lawyer. What? Why? I always charge projects to the Amex. This is not a project, Sloan. This is my business. I was just trying to help. There are ways to help that do not involve siphoning funds from your mother. I've never wanted her money. I don't understand why this is... When your mother and I were splitting up, she was convinced that I was going to come after her money. That without her, my business would fail. I told her that I was tired of money being the third person in our marriage. Now my daughter is using that money to help me get out of the hole. How could I have known that? We don't talk about anything in this family. Sloan, we need to be honest with each other from now on. Duh. So Sloan and her father finally talked. Things are messy around here, but they're going to be okay. Maybe. Sloan is in over her head for sure, and it's only a matter of time before Vivian blows a gasket. And that fight with Riley was pretty intense for two people who haven't even kissed yet. Ah, crap. So we overslept. Sue us. 
Where the hell is Sloane's hot dad? He normally wakes her up so she knows she's got 15 minutes to whine before it's time to shove her nasty little boots on. Ugh. <sighs> God, Ugh. it's early. Where were we? Sloane has been on the farm for a couple of weeks now. She's getting the hang of morning chores. She even, gag, made a grilled cheese using Betty's milk the other week. I couldn't watch. The restaurant slash barn is slowly coming together. Well, sort of. The floor still isn't level, whatever that means, but it's at least clean now, and the lights are up. At night, it really does look like there's a sky in there. Vivian is still on one. She started staking out Paul's baby grin to see if she can catch us. Please. We stopped going there months ago. We're way more into Paul's Casablanca. Uh, Dad! Louie! Where the heck is everyone? Is that a note on the counter? Huh? Noni, took your dad to the doctor. Say hi to Betty for me. Be home soon, Louie. What? When the hell did they leave for the doctor? Is something wrong? Wait, does this mean she has to do all the morning chores by herself? That's gonna take her ages. She can only carry one milk bucket at a time. Why didn't he wake me up? Ugh. Seems like Daddy St. James is still trying to hide how sick he really is. What happened to honesty is the best policy. Hey, girls. Go easy on me, okay? This girl is talking to cows. She's only been upstate a couple of weeks. Does she think they can understand her? Betty, I'm trusting you, okay? Don't make me regret it. I'm going to leave Sloane to be with the girls and their udders. I've got to go back to sleep. I was out until, like, four. Dad! I'm up! I'm up! I'm up! I'm up! Oh, what's happening? Noni, I... Careful. You're going to knock me over. Why didn't you wake me up? Are you all right? What happened? Something doesn't feel right. (coughs) Here, Joe. Let's get you on the couch and... Louis, what's happening? I'm all right. No, you're not. You're paler than I am without a spray tan. I was feeling a little dizzy, is all. So why didn't you wake me for help? Why did you have to call... Didn't want to scare you over nothing. Right, because waking up to find you gone wasn't scary at all. I thought we'd be back before. I figured you'd still be asleep. My body clock has been ruined by these damn cows. I've been up since six. I had to carry all the buckets by myself. You carried them all? Yes, That's not the point. I'm fine, Noni. Joe, come on. Louie, don't. She's a big girl. She deserves to know. How about I make you some breakfast while the two of you talk? I knew this zaddy was still hiding something, but I was hoping it was like a secret rich girlfriend, not another effing health emergency. I thought we'd agreed to be honest with each other, to ask for help when we need it. I know. You don't know, because you woke up in the middle of the night feeling awful, and instead of waking me, you called Louie. I'm trying, Nani. You can't imagine how hard it is for me to feel this powerlessness over my body. Of course I can imagine. I've spent my entire life with my body in someone else's hands. I know all about feeling powerless. I need you to tell me what's really happening. How about an omelet? I'm all right, Lou. You need to eat something. Two omelets, please. Slow. What did the doctor say? Let me guess, that you need to eat more, to work less? Yes. And? That if I don't, I, well, I am, I could be facing organ failure soon. Are you serious? Dad. It's part of why I wanted to get this place in order. I didn't want you to get sacked with this mess if I... Do not finish that sentence. I'm not interested in the end of that sentence. It's not going to happen. Tell me someone's got a plan because things are getting bleak in here and I don't see my therapist until next week. What is going to happen is that you are going to rest. Louie and I can keep this place from falling apart. I know, Sloan. But the restaurant... Joey, come on. Work with her here. She's giving you the death stare. You have nothing to worry about, Joey. We can do the restaurant. Listen, Sloan. I have a potential buyer for the farm that... Since when do you have a potential buyer? I've been talking to them for the past couple of months. I thought all that stopped when I said I was going to fix this place. Sloan. You told me that you wouldn't sell. This is my house, too. I know. So you lied. Sloan, it's not smart to call off a promising offer. 
Especially when we don't know if we can even get the restaurant running. And I, I might not even be here to run it. You didn't even let me try. You really don't think I can help? We don't have forever, Noni. I've been pulling for my savings for a long time. I know money is not an object when you're with your mother, but up here we're strapped. Then why won't you let me help? I have my cards, my Amex, I have... I told you that is not an option. I'm sorry, Sloan. When I'm feeling better, I'm calling the buyer. Fine. I'll just fix this place before you're better then. You gotta eat something, Joe. I'd rather go upstairs and lie down. Well, let's get you up to bed then. I can help. I got him, Noni. You should eat. Hey, uh, your dad's asleep. Oh, good. You all right? No, I'm not all right. I'm pissed. It's unfair that this has happened to your dad. No, I'm pissed at you, both of you, for keeping all of this from me. We need to level out the floor in the barn. The kitchen order's being delivered in a week. And we need the dining room floor sanded back so I can oil it. And probably 30 other things that I can't remember right now. Noni, do you need to talk about... I don't have time for that. I need help. I need extra hands. I can call in some favors. Where are you going? The barn. I need to think. My girl needs to be alone so she can panic. Five. There it is. Four, Go on, girl. Let it out. Three, two, so uh, I can't tell one, if she is having a five, panic attack or four, if she is about to start three, a craft project. Two, possibly both. One. I see ribbon, sticks, and an old curtain. Let's check in on Sloan a little later. Come in. Hey, Sloan. What is he doing here? Are there no other men in this town? Riley. What are you doing here? Louie called, said you guys could use some help. I don't need your help. Sounded like you did. I mean, I don't need your help. What are you making? Nothing. I'm self-soothing. I just left Saloni alone in the barn to freak out for a few hours. Instead, she appears to have made hanging centerpieces out of those branches. How does having a meltdown also look good on Sloan St. James? Jeez. Wow, Sloan, these are... These are beautiful. Thanks. What are you going to do with them? I'm going to hang them above all the tables in the dining room. If this ever actually becomes a dining room. Sloan, would you look at me, please? I'm not in the mood, okay? She doesn't want him to notice. She's been crying. Wait, have you been crying? I'm fine. I've been with enough women to know I'm fine means I've been crying. Are you trying to tell me you've slept with a lot of women? (laughs) No. Listen, our last conversation didn't go the way I planned. Didn't it? You purposely lulled me into a false sense of security by rescuing me and the cooking with your mom bit? Come on. That wasn't a bit. You think I planned to rescue your ass from the side of the road? Don't pretend you didn't enjoy it. I humiliate myself and you get to remind me I don't have any business know-how or a chef or whatever. It made you feel good. Wow. What do you want? I want to help. Louis sounded upset on the phone. He did? Sloan, what is going on? Sorry to disappoint you, but we're all fine here, so if you're looking for someone to rescue, it's just... God, just... I just came to see if you were okay. Why do you care? You don't even know me. I'm trying, if you would let me. Louis said come by tomorrow, but I came today to see you. Clearly I'm an idiot. I'll just go. Look, I just... Tell Louis I'll be back tomorrow. Yesterday was, uh, shitty. Joseph is still in bed. Sloan and Louis had to do the morning chores on their own. And now, Sloan is about to meet the ragtag group of people Louis gathered to get the barn ready for the kitchen installed. No sign of Riley. Yet. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for your help. We've got a lot to get done and no time to do it. If anyone's hiding any special skills, don't be shy. This is Sloan, Joey's daughter. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. We'd be screwed without you. All right. We've got extra gloves in the barn. Let's get started. Noni, this is Oliver. Who said you want to oil all those floors? Just the floor of the dining room area. I want to leave the rest of the flooring more rustic. Well, you probably want the whole thing sanded smooth for service and safety. Oh, right. But once you oil the dining room floor, it'll make the rest look rustic. Okay, let's do it. You got it. So with the help of Oliver Sander, the dining room is now on its way to being molded in Sloane's image. It seems like everything is coming together, but Sloane is still, like, freaking out. 
full scale. You got that, Noni? That, that wood is heavy. I'm good. Uh, I got it. I can't believe how much they're getting done or how much Sloan is sweating. You would think a crop top would help, but apparently not. Yes, Sloan is renovating a barn and a crop top. Hey, Sloan. Would you look at who showed up? Finally, you came. And I brought lunch. Riley, you're a lifesaver. How much do I owe you? Don't worry about it. Uh, I don't mind cooking. Where should I put this stuff? I'll grab it. Lunch is here! Sloan, say something. Do something. He was so sweet to you yesterday, and you wrecked him. Riley. What's up? About yesterday. Oh, forget about it. Look, I was having a horrible day. The worst day, and I took it out on you. I understand. I'm sorry. Don't be. Flirting with you after you'd been crying was pretty dumb for me. <laughs> you were flirting with me? I've been flirting with you since I met you. Or trying, at least. <sighs> but you're scary. I'm not scary. You are the prettiest person I've seen in real life. You're terrifying. <laughs> you guys coming to eat? Yeah, coming. Why are you so jumpy, Noni? I'm not. You know, I think we might just get this done. Don't get ahead of yourself. The kitchen doesn't even have a floor yet. But it will, Noni. It will. What'd you do to her? <laughs> Nothing. And with that, the first real day of the barn renovation was a huge success. The subfloor of the restaurant kitchen is well on its way to being level. The dining room might need another round of sanding, but it's on its way to being like, you know, almost better, possibly even cute. You headed to the bar, Riley? Nah, not tonight. Hey, food was great. Didn't know you could cook so well. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Night. Good night, Sloan. Good night. You coming up, Noni? Yeah, be right there. I thought you left. Yeah, I forgot something. What? You. Huh? <laughs> Where are you taking me? My truck. Hop in, baby girl. Don't look in the bed. What is happening? We're going on a date. We are? Yes. Riley has driven Sloan to the woods. There's some sort of clearing here. I guess this is how people date in the sticks. Can I look now? Not yet. Okay, now. <gasps> Riley, this is a little picnic in the bed of his truck with twinkle lights. This is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Here, let me give you a hand. I can't believe what I am seeing. Sloan St. James in the back of a pickup truck on a date with zero makeup on. So is this your move, impromptu picnic in the back of your truck? Mm-hmm. And if you're lucky, later we can do some cow tipping. <laughs> I would never tip a cow. You draw the line? I kind of love cows. Did you grow up with them? Not as many as you guys have, but yeah, a couple cows, some sheep, and chickens. You know, the food you brought for lunch today was incredible. I wish I could make a spread like this. It's beautiful. Those centerpieces you made for the dining room are stunning. You are redesigning that entire barn. I'm very intrigued by you. Look, the, the Sloan St. James intrigue isn't me. That's my mother's version. That's not why I'm intrigued by you. I couldn't care less about the Vivian Bryant version of you. I... You care a lot, but try to hide it. You want to save your father's farm, even though it's not your world. You seem afraid to break a nail, but you light up when you talk about cows. You're like this beautiful country. Oh my God, finally. That first date was not only impromptu, but hot. They finally kissed, yes! Now, Riley's dropping Sloan at home while trying to. They keep kissing and it's elongating the good night process. Sleep tight, baby girl. <laughs> Bye. Dad, what's wrong? What are you doing out here? Was that Riley's truck? Uh, yeah. Is something going on with you too? Why? He's a good guy. Don't break that boy's heart. A girl like you can do damage. Are you talking about mom? I've tried making two worlds one. It doesn't work. One of us was always giving something up until we lost everything. I'm not planning on losing anyone or anything, Dad. Okay, then. I'm going to bed. Good night. Good night. Welcome back, cuties. 
the day has finally arrived. Aaron Taylor Johnson has asked me to be his second wife. In my dreams. Really, today the restaurant kitchen is getting delivered and installed. All right. Either stop pacing or go outside. Sloan, Louie, and multiple guys named Bill have been working nonstop this week to get the barn in fighting shape. Riley has been keeping the team fed with increasingly creative lunch spreads. Sloan and Riley have been making out all over this farm and studies show that sporadic makeout sessions increase productivity. Why is there a gap in this countertop? Louie, I thought we talked about this yesterday. And that light fixture is crooked. Louie! That's it. Hey! Outside. You need to take a breather. I know today is big and we got to get this done, but you breathing down our necks is making people crazy. You mean making you crazy? Uh Uh-huh. Why don't you maybe start looking for a chef? You know the person who will actually be using all this equipment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Someone's car is pulling up. Is it the Lacanche? No, it's Riley. Hi. Well, good morning to you, too. Where's everyone? Inside. I've been exiled. Ha, you drove Louie crazy again. That was helpful. Better? I'll be better once I find a chef who actually knows how to use all the crap I bought. I've been trying to create a job posting, but all I come up with is, come cook in a barn restaurant that's unfinished on a farm that's falling apart, signed, girl with no degree or life experience. Who wouldn't want that job? So you're spiraling today. Yeah. Any chance you want to quit your job and cook here? I'd kill to see you in a chef coat. Would that make you my boss? I think it would make my dad your boss. Isn't that a conflict of interest? Not unless you're planning to date my dad. (laughs) I always wanted to be a chef growing up. Don't tell me you cry watching chef's table. Is that a turn off? A turn on. Do you still cook with your mom? On Sundays we cook together. She critiques my seasoning. I think I'd like her. You would. I was the only one of my siblings allowed to help my mom and grandma in the kitchen. If you always wanted to be a chef... How come you ended up managing the bar? The owner, Mike, owns a restaurant a couple towns over. I started out in the kitchen, worked my way up. Then he needed someone to manage the bar, and he offered me the job. It paid more than any restaurant job could ever, so... So you chose money over your dream? It wasn't much of a choice. I still send money to my family. Oh, I I didn't know. Well, now you do. So, you've given up on the chef dream? Are you actually trying to get me to work here? I don't know. I'm desperate. Yes? Desperate sounds like a code for can't pay. This could be a chance to have the job of your dreams. I can't quit my manager job to come work for free at a restaurant that isn't open yet. I'm already cutting it close with my hours to volunteer over here. I didn't realize helping was such a burden. No, Sloan. I should get back to the barn. Gotta make sure the delivery guys don't put things in the wrong place. The kitchen order has landed. The Lacanche is resting on the newly leveled floor. No one slipped on the now-oiled dining room. It's looking beautiful in here. Which, quite honestly, I wasn't expecting. Don't tell Sloane. Jeez, Noni. I wish your dad was well enough to come and look at this. It's pretty, but I still need people to run this place. I might be able to convince some of the old staff to come back. Really? Well, it'll take some convincing, maybe a signing bonus, but if we can find a chef... Hmm. Excuse me. Jesus, Sloan, you scared me. Were you about to leave without saying goodbye to me? I was just... it got kind of intense earlier. I'm sorry about before. I shouldn't have walked off. I'm sorry, too. I shouldn't have taken it so personally. (sighs) It was personal. I've always had money, and as embarrassing as this is, I didn't realize how much I'd taken it for granted. I can't imagine what it's like for you, having other people count on you. Sure you can. People are counting on you right now. Isn't your dad's window right there? He's sleeping. Are you sure? I feel like someone's watching us. I mean, I'm watching. Sloan never kisses guys first. She's definitely into him. What are you doing right now? Come on, I want some ice cream. Ice cream? I made a batch of cookies and cream last night. I can hear it calling to us. It's begging. Sloan, please. Who's that? Shit. (gasps) Oh my god. My mother. You need to go. You need to go. Giddy up, cowboy. What? Why? Because the wicked witch of the Upper East Side has come to collect her muse. Please, Riley, it's for your own good. Go! Are you gonna be alright? I'll be okay. Just please, go. Uh, fine, fine, fine. Sloan St. James. Well, you found me. 
Yes, I did. It only took weeks. I've exhausted myself, and right before the retrospective, Celeste had to go to Staten Island. Oh, the horror. And all along, you were here. Imagine. You're being quite flipped for someone who's been hiding out at Daddy's house like a child. I mean, honestly, Sloane. I don't understand why you're punishing me. Of course you don't. Excuse me? In order to understand my behavior, you'd have to uh, understand uh, me. Is that what this is about? Oh, you're feeling so misunderstood. I know you like to think that you're a mystery to me, Sloane. But running away to your dad's house and using my Amex to buy God knows what feels downright inevitable. Then why did it take you weeks to find me? Enough. Let's go. Mom, stop. Don't go in there. We're not done talking. Viv, what are you? Hi, Joe. You look like hell. Dad. A phone call would have been nice. She needed space. I don't appreciate your interference in my relationship with my daughter. She's my daughter too. Is she now? Oh, since when? She deserves to make her own choices. Hiding out here is not a choice. It's a cop out. That's not fair. My capacity for fairness ran out week two. Please go pack your things. I'd like to leave tonight. I'm not leaving. I have lost my patience. I was forced to trek here after weeks of searching for you after getting a notice that someone spent thousands of dollars at a kitchen supply store. I didn't ask her to do that. Well, with the way this place is looking, I'm not surprised you need money. Is the homespun look intentional? It's rustic. How have you even paid to keep this place running all these years? I hope it doesn't include dipping into Sloane's trust, or you'll be hearing from my lawyer. What trust? You know I would never touch that. Vivian. What trust? If Sloan had a trust this whole time, then why is Vivian still holding the purse strings? I am quite pressed for time here and through no fault of my own. I have two weeks until the most important show of my life. I do not have time for any more latent teen rebellion. It's time to pack. Vivian! Dad, wait, don't get up. Nani, I didn't touch your trust. I'll talk to her. You stay here. <sighs> your bedroom. It looks the same, I know. He kept it like this? The whole time. This place is in desperate need of a facelift. Maybe he thought I was coming back. You could have. Ugh, right. I didn't keep you from it. You didn't want to come back. Of course I didn't. The way you would talk about it, about him. Leaving this place broke my heart. I wasn't dying to break it again. Joseph's involvement, or lack thereof, is on him. I won't allow you to paint me like some sort of horrible monster. Only room for one painter in the family, huh? Where's your suitcase? If we get back to New York tonight, we can start work on the portrait tomorrow. I've already done the background and some light shading, so we should- You're not listening to me. I told you, I'm not leaving. I have things I need to do here. What things? <gasps> like wasting your time with the man in that decrepit little truck I saw? He has nothing to do with this. You cannot hide out here forever. You have a life and responsibilities back home. I have given you everything you could possibly want. How could you know what I want? You've never asked. Am I dreaming? Or did she just say that aloud? There will always be something your father needs. Some big idea that's going to cost more money than he has. For years, I've helped fund his every whim for this place. And every time he got bored and moved on to the next one. I would hate to see your father's lack of focus become your life's work. I'll be back in the morning once you've come to your senses. It feels like a tornado just ripped through this house. Are you alright? Why didn't either of you tell me about the trust? It was part of our agreement. Your mother insisted on a stipulation that you not receive the money until you turn 30. 30? Everyone in my family gets their trust at 21. She didn't think you'd be ready for the responsibility before then. Well, what do you think? I fear you'd spend it trying to save this place. I would rather sell than see a single cent of your trust spent on me. How can these be the only options? Slow. Dad, I'd like to go to bed. Good night. Good night, Nani. <sighs> I can't believe less than 12 hours ago, Sloan was kissing Riley and talking about soft serve. She fell asleep without washing her face or using retinol. This is really bad. It's 4 a.m. 
Don't tell me she's still doing morning chores. What are you doing here? I figured you had a rough night. I came to help you with your chores. He... <laughs> but what, um... He came to help her shovel horse poop? Is this what country boys are like? Should should I get one? Oh, that's so nice of you. Hey, it's all right. Come here. He's holding her while she wears the ugliest outfit I have ever seen. Is this love? So, do you want to talk about it? Your mom seemed scary. Oh, yeah. She came to take me back to the city. Are you gonna go? She thinks I'm in over my head. Everyone does. That's not true. Yes, it is. Even you. Not now. You wake up at five in the morning to milk cows. You transform this barn. All I did was shop and make stupid crafts with vintage lace. You are not giving yourself enough credit. You've given Joe hope. He was really down after his diagnosis. It was hard to see he was going to sell this place to Clay, but... Who the hell is Clay? He's a friend of mine who's looking to invest in this property up here. I've been connecting him and your dad. Wait, 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 wait a second. You've been helping my dad to sell my family home? Everything you're doing adds real value to this place. I don't care about the value. That's not why I'm doing any of this. It was just in case. You don't believe in me either, do you? That's not true. I think you're working your ass off, and I think this place is looking better than it has in ages. You just don't think it will be enough. I didn't say that. No wonder you laughed at the idea of cooking here. I laughed at the idea of you being my boss. I get it. I'm just a spoiled girl who thought she could save a farm with knickknacks and a well-placed fairy light. Clearly, I'm stupid. You are not stupid, but if it doesn't work out for you guys, you have another option. That's all Clay is. You lied to me. Both of you. Sloane, please let me explain. No! I will not listen to another person explain why they had a really good reason to lie to me. I'm done. Your dad asked me not to. I was trying to be respectful. The respectful choice would have been for everyone to treat me like an effing adult who can handle the truth. I know you can handle- The respectful choice would have been being honest about why you were coming around so much. What? Maybe you could have said something before I lost my mind and made the mistake of falling for you. Don't say that. It's not a mistake. Coming here was a mistake. Trying to fix this place was a mistake. I don't know what I was thinking. You were thinking that you wanted to be your own person. If this is what being my own person feels like, I don't think I want it. Where are you going? To pack. You are not leaving. Sloan, don't do this. We wouldn't have worked anyways. Says who? See you around, Riley. I can't believe she's really leaving. (gasps) She's actually packing. This girl could definitely use a drink. Too bad it's 5 a.m. and the only bar in town is managed by Riley. Who is it? It's me. Can I come in? (sighs) Yeah. Come in. You're packing. I'm leaving. Why? Mom was right. I can't hide out here forever. I'm in over my head. You don't have to go. What's the point of staying? You're going to sell this place to Clay, right? Whether I finish that damn barn or not. Who was I kidding? Louie can manage until then. What about the restaurant? Riley. Oh, don't worry. Riley is safe from me. I didn't mean what I said. Oh, yes, you did. I've loved having you here. Can I ask you something? Did you ever believe I could do it? Fix the restaurant? It's a big job, Noni. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I thought. Noni, I'm sorry. I'll call you when I get home. I cannot believe this. Ugh, not Vivian getting what she wants! Ready to go, darling? Grab her bags, please. Yes, ma'am. You don't have to snap at him. He doesn't mind his job. I forgot something. Oh, well, hurry up. We need to get on the road. Where is she going? What did she forget in the stables? <sighs> hey, ladies. Oh, I couldn't leave without saying goodbye to my girls. I'm going to miss you. I'm sorry I have to leave so suddenly. I'm sure that's a bit of a shock, but everyone was right. I'm not cut out for this place. Look out for my dad. Louie, too. Make sure he gives you extra apples. And if my dad sells this place, make sure he keeps you, okay? Bye, Star. Bye, Maple. I'm not crying about horses. You are. Sloane, let's go. I'm coming. Are you all done? (sighs) Yeah, I'm done.
welcome back to the Upper East Side. Well, technically, we're in Midtown right now, but whatever. New York finally got Sloan St. James back. But something's not right. Sloan's been dodging my calls and refuses to go to Bottomless Brunch. She also sat for Vivian's latest portrait. I haven't seen Sloan this deflated since the photos of Timothy Chalamet and Kylie Jenner came out. Tragic. Could it be the Riley heartbreak or the constant worry about how her dad's doing without her? Anyway, I'm crashing the MoMA. I've got to see my girl. Sloane, why don't you let my makeup artist touch you up? I told you, I don't wear makeup anymore. Are you attempting to make some sort of statement? Is this about animal cruelty or something equally insane? Surely we could find you a vegan mascara. (sighs) Why do you care? Tonight's not about me, mother. It never is. It's about you. Celeste? Sloan, you're gorgeous. But this is a big night. There are going to be lots of photographs taken, and we don't want you looking washed out. I know it's a no to the baby Botox, but a little bit of contour and... Stop! I'm going out there like this. I'll still smile extra big at anyone who can actually afford Vivian's work, and I'll tell them that the biggest joy of my life has been being painted by my mother. But that's it. I'm done with the paparazzi and Oh, we're here. Don't forget to smile for the camera, ladies. Darling, we talked about this. You're supposed to be on my other side. Switch, please. Now. Is someone catching you at a bad angle? I can't imagine. It's time for Taylor to the rescue, as always. Thank you. Move, please. Excuse me. Excuse me. Move. Sloan. Taylor. (laughs) Sloan. Sloan. (laughs) You look so pretty. Shut up. You look pretty. Now let's go inside and make the bartender our freaking bestie. Oh. My. God. There are so many of you. I feel like everyone is staring at me. Well, babe, they kind of are. Some of these portraits are bigger than I remember. I was going to say, did some of these grow in storage? That one with you and the tutu is heinous. Who does Vivian think she is? This is hell. Mm, Look who it is, baby girl in the flesh. Don't start with me, I'm not in the mood. How much do I have to pay to have you on my wall? More than you can afford. What makes you think I can't pay? Because you're wearing a skinny tie and you have your ankles out at the MoMA. Now move! Sloane, what is happening? I thought you weren't going to sit for that portrait. What happened? She was right about me. I don't know how to do anything else. I had no excuse not to. Sloane. Tay, don't. Let's go hide inside the bathroom. Isn't blocking the door a fire hazard? Probably, but whatever. Here, catch. You brought the flask? I haven't seen this thing since high school. Desperate times call for desperate drinking. (laughs) Absent? I didn't know how bad tonight was going to be, okay? I haven't seen you like this since. Since? Since I first met you and your parents had just split up. You feel volatile. Have you talked to your dad at all? Not since I called him when I first got back. Any word from... Riley? He keeps calling. It's only been a couple of weeks. You're not an easy girl to lose. Thanks. Look, can I just say something? What? Is it me, or do those portraits kind of suck? Like, I get that I don't know anything about art. My dad bought a Jeff Koons, and I was like, literally, why? But some of those paintings out there are not even good. Thanks. I know you're trying to cheer me up, but... Sloan, there's so much more to you than those stinking paintings out there. No, there isn't, actually. I tried to stand up to my mom, and I failed. I tried to help my dad, and I couldn't do that either. I worked day and night on that farm, and everyone saw, and they still all thought that I couldn't do it. So what? You're allowed to try and fail, Sloan. But for what it is worth, all of those pics of the barn you sent me didn't look like failure. Your mom, she doesn't get to punish you for not knowing who you are yet. Especially when she's been forcing you to be someone else. We're in here. We're in here. Occupado. Move along. Bye. What? Sloan, why on earth did you invite your father? I didn't. Dad's too sick to travel. No, he is out there parked in front of my new portrait. What? I will not allow this to become a scene. Get rid of him, then come find me for more photos. Oh my god. He's actually here. 
How did he... What is he doing here? God, he really is hot. Oh my god, you cannot say that in public, Taylor. Go talk to your zaddy. Daddy. You need help. Dad? Noni. What are you doing here? How did you get here? I drove. You're not supposed to be tiring yourself out like this. I owe you an apology. For what? I shouldn't have let you go like that. I made my choice. I don't mean the other week. I mean when your mom and I split up and I left you. Oh, that was forever ago. I missed so much. This room is full of portraits of you, and I don't recognize you in any of them. I made a terrible mistake leaving. Don't blame yourself. None of those portraits are actually of me. They're versions of me that Mom created. I know they're not portraits of you. That's what I'm saying. None of this is you, or what you look like. I didn't know it was like this. This extreme. That's part of why I was so happy working on the restaurant. It felt like I was changing my fate or something. I guess that was silly of me. It wasn't silly. All the work you did. It's amazing. The barn is transformed. Too bad it was all for nothing. It's not for nothing. Why do you think I'm here? To stare at paintings of my face like everyone else? I came here to convince you to come back. Come back? Why? To watch you sell the place that I love? For the opening. Louis found people to staff it for one night. Riley even got some of his old co-workers to agree to help us out in the kitchen. The truck is ready for the hayrides. Your whole vision is coming to life, at least for one night. You deserve that. So, will you come back? Just for the opening. You deserve to see all of your hard work pay off. We don't even have a chef. Riley offered. Oh. It's just for one night. After that, I'll be finalizing the sale with Clay. Oh, I've got to retire for my health and... But you deserve to see your vision come to life. But no one's even going to show up. I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> Darling! The donors and I were just talking. Dad and I are going home. Let the driver take him. You can't miss my toast. I am missing your toast. I'm leaving. Would you excuse us? Let go! I will not be humiliated. I think our daughter is well-versed in being humiliated, Fit. I don't believe I was speaking to you, Joseph. Mom, enough. I'm done. Done? This is it. You got your paintings and your collection and your goddamn MoMA retrospective. I'm done. Sloane, you're being ridiculous. Lower your voice. I will never sit for you again. Come on, Dad. Let's go home. Slow. Give me the keys. I'll drive. I can. Excuse Dad, me? Dad, you're exhausted. Let me drive. I got my license renewed, remember? Uh, we're home? That was fast. Did you speed? You were just asleep. Come on. Let's get you up to bed. Wait, Nani. I need to show you something. Oh, it's late. This is important. Dad, what are you... Let me get the lights. <gasps> the restaurant. It's finished. It looks just like how I... Wait, how did you... You left your notebook in the barn when you left with your mom. Wow. I can't believe it's... It's beautiful, Dad. This place? This looks more like you than any of those paintings hung up at the Met. It was the MoMA. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Let's get you to bed. The day is finally here. They did it. It's the restaurant's big opening night, and the barn has just been turned into the Hudson Valley restaurant of Sloan's dreams. Riley's fine ass has executed a tasting menu of elevated homespun small plates, a mouthwatering short rib entree, and a strawberry rhubarb dessert. There's champagne being served in teacups, thrifted by none other than Sloan St. James herself. Now, do you think Sloane is admiring all of her hard work? No. She's convinced no one is coming and is itching to tear off her manicure. I'm thinking. I just feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs> We've crossed check your list five times. But we did no advertising. We have all this food and no one's gonna... Hey, get up. You gotta breathe. Look around and tell me what you see. Twinkle lights and staff with pressed collars. You know what I see? A beautiful restaurant. Now calm down. I think I can hear our diners arriving. 
Sloney! <gasps> Taylor! What the hell are you doing here? I brought the party, obviously. And only our hottest friends! I brought the richest ones, and I told them it was a grand birthday table. How did you even know the opening was still on? That would be me. You called Taylor? I needed backup. Now relax. Enjoy. This is your night. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Joseph St. James. This farm has been in my family for a very long time. I'd forgotten how special this place was. Until my daughter showed up and reminded me. Sloan and Louie, Riley, this community, they turned this barn from a room full of hay and broken furniture into this beautiful restaurant you're sitting in right now. I want to raise a glass to my daughter, Sloan, for her vision and for her love of fairy lights. To Sloan. Thank you. I talked to my lawyer. The money is all yours. What? Your trust. It's yours. Do what you want with it. You never have to rely on Vivian again. Thanks, Dad. Sloney, I am so proud of you. Thanks. Have you been with Riley? He's delicious. I actually haven't seen him since I got back yet. Then what are you doing here talking to me? Dessert is served. The night is ending. Go get him. I don't know. Now? You are wearing a backless dress. Lose the bra and get the hell out of here. Hi. Has anyone seen Riley? Uh, food was served, so we left to close up at the mill. Uh, they're short staff tonight. Hello? Hey, we're closed. I'm sorry, we're... Sloan? Hey. You're staring. Are you not wearing a bra? Oh, so you like my outfit. Jeez, uh, is is that dress see-through? I'll take that as a yes. If you were looking for a drink, last call was ages ago. Oh, no, I was looking for you. Well, you found me. I kept calling. I'm sorry, I... I never felt like this about a guy before, and my dad is sick, and my mom is nuts, and I just freaked out. Right, I see. You know, it was kind of hot in the kitchen tonight. I'm I'm sorry if it was, like, um, unpleasant. Maybe I should install more fans for when you guys are working. Let me congratulate you first before you start talking about more improvements and renovations. I'm really impressed, Sloane. I should be congratulating you. Oh, me? I saw a table of women moaning through their entree. You sure they weren't just watching me cook? I'm being serious. You're an incredible chef. We couldn't have done tonight without you. So what are you going to do with the rest of your life? You headed back to the city in the morning? Actually, I'll be sticking around here for a while. Good. Your dad needs you. Thanks. About that, I spoke to my dad, but uh, your friend Clay, tell him to seek real estate elsewhere. We're not selling the farm anymore. Glad to hear it. I'm sorry about all of that. I, I've known Joe for years, and he asked for help. I just wanted to make his life easier. You know, that's all it was. I know, but now I know how you can make his life easier. Truly easier. And what is that? I'm here to offer you a job, actually. I have a job. My father is sick, and he can't keep working like this. He needs to retire. Tonight proved to me that this restaurant could become something real. And I'm going to make it happen. Sloan... Whatever you make managing this place, I'll triple it for you to be the head chef at my family's restaurant. At least for the first year. Triple? Sloan, come on. You can't be serious. You already helped fix the place and got us a kitchen staff. Those people know you and trust you already. There's no one better for the job. Sloan, triple is too much. I I can't accept that. But this is your dream, isn't it? Yeah, but Sloan, really... How? My trust. Look, if you want the job, it's yours. If you don't want it, fine, I'll hire somebody else, but I would much rather it be you. Why are you looking at me like that? Um, because I want you back. I want you too, but we can't. Why? Because I want you to be my head chef at a restaurant I'm about to pour every cent I have into. And if you say yes, which I think you will, because if you don't, I'm just going to beg you until you give in, and... That all means I'm going to become your boss. So... Bosses can't date employees. Why not? I mean, I like when you boss me around. I'm being serious, Riley. So am I, baby girl. 